If y'all are looking to get into a motovlogging setup, then you came to the right place, guys. We are diving in today talking about motovlog setups and the easiest way to go about achieving a good setup. That way you can get out there making videos of your rides and things like that. If you want to get into YouTube and posting your videos, we're going to give you tips and tricks on how to get the best sound quality and also how to set up your GoPro the best way possible to achieve good video results. All right, guys, let's get into this right now. Here we go. So looking at my camera setup here, we just have a GoPro with just a very simple mount and you have to buy this little GoPro piece. That way you can plug your microphone into this because it doesn't have a microphone port on the GoPros anymore. So you have to buy this $50 piece right here, super overpriced to be able to run your mic into the GoPro. So this is essentially what it looks like. We're gonna dive in talking about how I actually put the microphone and everything in the helmet but it's just a very basic setup. This mount right here was only 15 bucks on Amazon and the GoPro, obviously you're gonna have to pay whatever price those are going for right now. And one cool thing about the GoPro Hero 11, and I'm not sure when they actually started doing the voice activated where you can just say GoPro start recording, uh, but with this one, you can do that. So that was one good thing when you're out moto vlogging, just being able to say GoPro start recording or GoPro stop recording and not have to touch the start or stop button is very beneficial. So that is one thing I would suggest is getting a GoPro that actually has that voice activated feature. It is gonna save you a lot of headache. And with gloves, it's kind of hard to hit those buttons. So that voice activation is really awesome and very critical for this. Let's start looking at some of the components here. I'm gonna break them down, show you how much they cost and why they're important for this setup. So this very simple setup is relatively cheap. Like I said, you're gonna to have to go out and buy your GoPro, but let's look at the mount itself. So the mount is very simple. All it has is just this Velcro that goes around the back here and it's able to lock into place. So whatever kind of helmet you have, pretty much this is gonna fit. And it just has one of those on both sides. You just cinch those down and it's gonna hold it nice and secure. And I haven't had any issues with this mount thus far. Now I do like to have my GoPro in this orientation with it facing down because it automatically converts it to right side up anyway. It's just gonna give a little bit better orientation across the handlebars. And I know a lot of people like to mount the GoPros with the little side piece here that comes around. That way the camera is perfectly in line with the chin, but I don't think it really matters that much. Honestly, I can't tell much of a difference and don't really care to put those cheek pads right here because those adhesive pads don't really stick that well to this helmet and they have a tendency to fall off. And this right here just gives you that extra sense of security with the Velcro. And then once you have it down, I mean, it's kind of locking it into place anyway. So there you go. Uh, when I have the camera going and I'm riding my bike, I obviously have the face shield down. That's gonna mitigate a lot of that wind from coming through and it's not gonna have all that wind sound if you have your helmet screen down. So that is one thing that you need to do. But this orientation right here, your helmet is kind of looking this way anyway. It's not up like this. So there you go. It's pretty much flat, the GoPro is, when you're on the motorcycle. So don't worry about it being candid too much. And if you really needed to fix it, you could. But I haven't had any issues. I mean, you could take some looks at the footage and tell me if you think this could be improved as far as the video footage. But I think the video is really good. Now, when I first started moto vlogging, there was a lot of issues with the audio. So we're gonna dive in talking about with the settings that you need to use on your GoPro in order to moto vlog because it's gonna be critical. So I'm gonna take this off and show you the settings you need to use. Turn this thing on too. So what you need to do, get this to focus a little bit better. So you go to your settings. So you wanna go down to where 
you have your wind. So you see the wind is off. Now, usually when I record with this, if I'm not motor vlogging, if I'm out fishing or doing whatever, you know, I have the wind turned on. That's going to mitigate any of the wind sound. But when I first started motor vlogging, I didn't take this into consideration and it really threw everything off. So you want to go in and turn off your wind. That way, when you're plugged in with your stereo end cable from, for your mic, it's not going to be trying to compensate for the wind because it will mess it up completely if you don't do this. So there you go. We're turning the wind off. Now, the rest doesn't really matter. You can do raw audio. So this really doesn't matter that much. I just keep it on all the way, raw high. And that is all you really need to do. Now, if you had a media mod, obviously, you're going to be plugging into that. But that is it. Make sure you turn that wind off and you're going to be good to go. You can go back to your settings and start recording and you're going to be good to go. So that's what you have to do with your GoPro to, in order to start motor vlogging. So another thing with the GoPro, if you don't turn off that wind, then it's going to be doing a lot of this right here, popping and cracking. And it sounds crazy. So don't make the same mistake that I did when I first got into motor vlogging. Please follow these tips to get your GoPro set up and you're not going to have a lot of that popping and cracking. So once again, installing this again, it's very simple. Now you can get all kinds of different pins and stuff to connect your GoPro, but I just like this really compact one. And then the piece right here, we're going to talk about in a second. I got a lot of these adhesive strips, but this right here, what we're going to talk about is from GoPro and you can tell I have elect black electrical tape wrapped around this because it's like a rubber material and it doesn't stick to this adhesive at all. None. That's why I had to wrap it in this electrical tape and I've had no issues since doing that. It falling off in the middle of a rod or anything like that. So there is a little, I think it's a lightning connector right here behind this piece of tape and I blocked that off just for extra uh, wind protection. So when I'm going down the highway and stuff, wind isn't potentially getting into this and messing up the audio. And all that is, is ju it just goes into the lightning connector on the GoPro. And then back here, you're plugging in your microphone. So this right here is going to be running you around 50 bucks. And I don't think there's any other ones out there made by like no name brands or anything like that, that actually fit the GoPro, you're gonna have to go and buy this GoPro version. So there you go, that's gonna run you 50 bucks. And I just have this mounted and a decent orientation to the GoPro itself. You can see it just connects right in there. And you're gonna have to purchase, I forgot about this little door right here. So most GoPro doors, you know, it doesn't have this little piece right here. So you're going to have to buy that piece so you can access your battery. But I just leave that connected. And then you just, it, that little access door allows you the ability to plug in this little adapter piece. So there you go. That is from the GoPro to the adapter. And then you're going to plug your microphone in to that adapter piece. Easy as that. And then every helmet's going to be a little bit different. But under here... Now, the company that I'm going to talk about, Purple Panda, is the microphone that I have. It came with this little adapter piece. And we're going to talk about why you need this adapter piece right now. So this is the microphone that I suggest getting. I've purchased quite a few mics in the past uh, from various brands on Amazon. And this one right here, if you've done any type of research on YouTube, you know that Purple Panda pops up as being one of the top microphones. And it's for a good reason because they just work. So I bought this two pack right here and I think it was only like 35 bucks. It comes with everything you need to get out there and start moto vlogging. It has a lot of different accessories and a cool little carrying case, but it comes with everything you need. It comes with various splitters. I mean, I don't need this, but this one actually came with two microphones. So this is what your microphone looks like when you get a Purple Panda microphone. It's gonna come with just the simple microphone cover right there. 
And that is what the lavalier microphone looks like from Purple Panda. Nothing too crazy. And one thing that it comes with that is probably the most critical part of this whole setup is this windscreen right here. This little fuzzy windscreen. This right here is going to take the wind noise and reduce it to almost nothing. And even though you have a full face helmet on, or I strongly suggest you using this with a full face helmet, that way the wind reduction is present. And this right here is going to have the best chance of blocking out all that wind. So you're going to put your fuzzy on. And like I said, this one came with a two pack, which was pretty cool. That way, if you have issues with your mic or something like that, you got a separate one, you know? So you're just going to put your, your fuzzy windscreen on, and that is what that looks like. And we're going to show you the placement inside the helmet, and just about every helmet you're going to be able to do this. So that right there, super critical. If you don't go with a Purple Panda mic, just make sure you have some of these windscreens. That is going to be super critical in eliminating all that wind noise. So I mentioned before the reason that it comes with this little audio adapter. So you can see right here on the mic itself, it has three of these lines and I'm not going to go into the terminology or anything like that, but you see this one has two. To be able to run the audio into your GoPro, you have to go from the three into the two. And I don't know the reason for it. I'm not an electronics guru but this is what makes it work. It has the two lines. So just make sure whatever microphone you get, you're using the two lines and getting this adapter. And this adapter did come with the Purple Panda mic. So there you go. If you buy the one in the description box, it's gonna come with all this stuff right here. And you just plug this right into that GoPro adapter and it runs right into your GoPro. For this setup, you don't even need the extension cables that it comes with. This is probably another like four to five feet of microphone extension cable and it comes with two of them so you don't need any of that this right here is plenty to run from your inside of your helmet where your mic is to the gopro adapter and we're going to show you that right now all right so the next thing we have to get our helmet set up to actually put the mic in so most of the cheek pads and helmets can pop out like this and hopefully i can get a good camera angle but essentially i just have that microphone tucked down in there. I still have it all secured up with its little uh, piece right there that kind of keeps it all nice and tidy. And then I just have my microphone right here. And all I'm doing is tucking that extra cord way back in the cheek pad there to get it out of the way. And then I just want this microphone sitting right on the edge of the cheek pad. And then I'm gonna clip this back down. That way it holds it nice and secure back in the cheek pad. So let's see if we can get a different angle on the microphone here. There we go. So you can see how the mic sticks right out of the end of the cheek pad here. It's gonna be held nice and secure in there. It's not gonna be going anywhere. And this is gonna be enough wind reduction with this little windscreen fuzzy that you're not gonna be worried about all the popping, cracking, and then just overall wind noise there. So that is what I suggest. That's gonna give you the best option for audio clarity as well as wind reduction you can put it on back in the cheek pad but i feel like you have more of a muffled sound when you do that so i strongly suggest putting it out here and that let that windscreen do what it needs to do and you're going to have some pretty clear audio right there next all you have to do is take that adapter plug it up to the into the mic cable there. Make sure you have it fully seated. There we go. It's clicked in nice right there. And then all I did to give it even more security is I just took one of the extra leftover pieces right there for the cables so you can make it nice and tidy. And I wrapped it around this little loop right there and it keeps it nice and secure. And then you can just plug the rest of it into your GoPro adapter right there. So that is all you really have to do, guys. This right here is a super easy setup that gets the job done. This is a super easy setup that doesn't take a lot of money and it doesn't take a lot of know-how to be able to record videos and have some pretty good audio without having to break the bank. That is the setup. 
If you have any questions or comments about the setup itself, please hit me up in the comment box below. But this is probably the easiest and the cheapest way to do it. Purple Panda mic running about $35. I think you can find them for $25 if you just buy the single. The piece right here, $50. I'm going to place all of this in the description box below. And then the GoPro Hero 10. I know they have the 11 out. And you're probably looking at around $250 to maybe $300 for a new GoPro. But like I said, I don't know what model started out with the voice activation. It might have been the 8s and the 9s. So you could probably find GoPros even cheaper than that. And you know, the mount is only like 15 bucks. So not a lot of money has to be invested to get some good audio out of your setup here. All right, so here it is. We have the, the camera, we have everything set up like we talked about. And pretty much all this is gonna be out of the way. So you're not gonna have to worry about it getting in the way when you're putting this on. So I usually just grab the two chin straps put it on I don't like to mess with any of the stuff so I kind of just grab the helmet like this when I put it on and then I can put the visor down when I start riding all right here we go so with this setup with it in the cheek pad you know it's nice and comfortable still and if you wanted to, you can tuck it on in there a little bit further. I've done it both ways, but with a nice little, little wind cover, little fuzzy, whatever they're called, you can, uh, you can still retain the voice pretty well. And you can still hear the sound of the motorcycle like a lot of people like to hear in the videos, because why not? This thing sounds amazing, so I love hearing that as well. This setup you can use on windy days you can use it any kind of day because you have a fully enclosed helmet one thing I would do is block off some of the wind holes and the vents on the front of the helmet it might keep some of that wind down but if you has one of those little fuzzies on the front of your mic then it should kill some of that wind noise enough to where you can have some very clear vocals and at the end of the day where you get the best clarity is from actually using a good editing software where you can kind of go through smooth out the vocals and the engine noise you know i haven't found a mic yet that is completely perfect to where you don't have to do some type of editing for the audio to make it nice and, and clear it just doesn't happen uh, so that's where you need that editing software. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking, because this is what I thought when I first got into Moto Vlog. I thought I would just get a mic, any kind of mic, set it up, and it would be perfect right out of the gate. And that's not the case. I mean, some of my videos still don't have perfect sound quality because I don't go through with a really good editing software. I only use iMovie. So if you want perfect clarity, then you can get an editing software to smooth that out. But this is the simplest way to do it. If you have an iPhone and you have iMovie, you can do this really, really quick and easy. And that's all you need. The desktop version of iMovie, you can smooth out the vocals. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this was pretty informative. It's gonna give you a good idea how to get your mode of vlogging setup going. If you're looking at doing some stuff like this, getting out on your motorcycle and making some videos or maybe you want to start a YouTube channel and you just don't know how to do the motive vlogging setup. Don't make some of the same mistakes that I did when I first got into this. Make sure you get your GoPro set up the correct way without that wind reduction setting on. Make sure you get all that fine-tuned and get the right mic right out of the gate. Don't go for the cheapest mic out there on Amazon because you're going to be wishing that you would have just bought the Purple Panda. So go ahead, get that. I know you have to spend some money to get the little adapter piece here for the GoPro. Overall, this is a pretty cheap and effective way to get out there and start moto vlogging. So hopefully you liked this video. If you did, like and subscribe, we'd love to have you. And thanks for watching. We'll catch you in future videos.